Hello, my name is Kevin Van Note, and I'm the band director here at Wapani High School. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, we are going to kind of wear in two different hats tonight. The band is going to first be a concert band and play three selections that we're going to do this Saturday at Contest in Indianapolis. It's ISSMA Organizational Contest, and we're going to be doing a march, a ballad, and a dramatic work. Um, on Saturday when we perform at contests, we perform in front of judges who fill out an evaluation sheet and we get gold, silver, or bronze medal. So we're hoping to get a gold medal this Saturday in Indianapolis at contest. And these are the pieces we're going to be playing there. Uh, the, the first opener is a march. And in concert band, a march is traditionally made up of three different sections. A, a medium loud, in music we say mezzo forte, a mezzo forte opening section and then a loud forte second section. And then the third section is called the trio. And the trio is usually half of it is soft, and then the second half of it is very loud. And I tell the kids that's like the party section of a march. So listen for those three sections as we're playing Bonds of Unity. A little bit about Carl King, the composer. Other than uh, John Philip Sousa, Carl King is the most famous march composer. He was a quiet and warm and gracious man, a giant of a man both physically and spiritually. A truly great man in the evolution of American bands, a human being loved by all who knew him. Carl King lived the boyhood dream that most men only experienced as fantasy. He literally did run away to join the circus. And there he became a virtuoso baritone player, and he had his first compositions published at the age of 17. He went on to become a famous circus bandmaster and later conductor for many years of the renowned Fort Dodge. Iowa Municipal Band. So as you listen to this, it does kind of at times sound like circus music. Here is Bonds of Unity. <laughs> Traditionally, when you go to contest, you do a powerful opener like a march, and then your second piece is a soft ballad, and tonight that ballad is called Follow the River. It is the year 1775, and Mary Ingalls is 23, happily married and expecting her third child, when Shawnee Indians terrorize her Virginia settlement and take her prisoner. After months of captivity, she escapes and is now faced with the nearly insurmountable task of battling the forces of nature along with the strong possibility of being recaptured. Picture, if you will, 
an exhausted woman collapsing on the banks of the Ohio River as she questions her determination to find the needed strength and courage to successfully complete the thousand mile journey back to the safety of her home. It should be noted that this programmatic composition is a musical portrayal of the popular novel, Follow the River, written by acclaimed historian and author James Alexander Thorne. And historically, the book is based on a true story. So this is a musical interpretation of Mary Ingalls um, predicament when she had to travel back and try to find back to her family and home. I would like to acknowledge our string bass over here, Mr. Dakota Keys. Would you give him a round of applause? <laughs> he's really had to work hard, because he's never played string, that kind of string bass before, so he's really had to work hard and practice to learn these parts. Very, very proud of him. And also over here, someone that, who is playing an instrument that is not normally there is Mr. Casey Hess on piano. Give him a round of applause, please. We spent a lot of time uh, like giving him lessons and practicing and getting him ready to do that last number as well as this third piece that we're about to do for you entitled Nevermore. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Nevermore was commissioned in honor of the 60th anniversary of Edgar Allan Poe in Virginia. 
to tie the school at, at a school in Virginia, to tie the school to, into the commission, the composer decided to base the piece on the, on the poem, The Raven, one of Poe's most famous poems. In the poem, Poe describes a man who is confronted by a raven and slowly descends into utter madness. The opening sounds of the piano in this piece create an eerie backdrop to begin the work. The mysterious harmonies in a lonely saxophone solo paint a picture of a desolate man in a quiet apartment. As tension builds, other instruments begin to answer the saxophone, almost competing for attention and refusing to go away. This moves into ominous chords presented in the brass, depicting the first sighting of the raven. As the tempo quickens, the man begins to confront the raven, each time beginning angrier and more forceful as the raven only responds, nevermore. This anger continues to mount until the music becomes violent, representing the man's journey into insanity. This chaos continues until the music suddenly releases into the dark and melancholy piano line from the opening. A soft duet at the end between the alto saxophone and the bass clarinet bring the listener back to the opening melodies and leave the audience wondering what has become of the man after his encounter with the raven. Here is Nevermore.
Can we have another round of applause for our piano player, Mr. Casey Hess? And before we move down to the second portion, which will just take us a second to move down there to the second portion of our show, very quickly, we usually do this at the Variety Show at the end of the year, but I thought I'd just take a quick second. If you were a senior, would you please stand up really quickly if you're a senior? And yeah, the percussion, bow down if you're not, I guess. I have seven seniors. Would you give them a round of applause, please? <laughs> Casey Hess, Jacob Brandon on trumpet, Travis Pierce on French horn, and he helps me with percussion and is playing tuba. Uh, Jake Pretty on alto saxophone, Noah Turner on trombone, Blake Hawkins back there on percussion, and Michael Bivens over here on tenor sax. We give them one more round of applause. We'll talk to them a little more at the end of the year at the Variety Show about what their future plans are. Right now, it'll just take us a second to transition down here to the drums, where we're going to play a few pieces for you that are really exciting. I told the kids it's nice to do something serious, where we're doing like composed music up here and reading music, and it's difficult, and now we're going to do something that's kind of the opposite. We're not using any music, and we're not playing traditional, like, American band instruments. It's still difficult, but they're not using any music. Everything is memorized in their heads. So here we go. This is the drum ensemble. We'll be right with you. Very quickly, because I did not acknowledge our soloist on that last piece on House of Saxon with Jacob Pretty, and I'm
comes on that end, and gym bass in the middle. So in that piece, they were all doing different rhythms that lock together, and that's a characteristic of African music. You have different drums doing different rhythms, but those rhythms kind of lock together to create an overall rhythm. This next piece is the exact opposite of that. They're all doing the exact same thing the whole time, and this is called fun. One, two, two, hits, ready, and now.
called Pulse. I wrote this thing like 15 or more years ago, 17 years ago. I did this music at my last school with kids. So this piece is like something that's really, I don't know, kind of dear to me because I've been doing it for so long with so many different students. So this is called Pulse. And they do a couple of cool things in here, like a trick where they're playing on other drums. There's times where other drums, but the different sections are playing on rhythms, like low, medium, high. And then there's times where they're all doing the exact same thing. Thank you again for being here tonight. Here is Pulse.